Hello and welcome, I am the Greek Geek because I am Greek and indeed a geek. And now I'm finally getting to my Aquaman review. So with this movie we can see that DC movies can actually be good. So now we have two good DC movies. If DC keeps going down this road, the DCEU might actually be saved. Aquaman's half-brother King Orm declares war on the surface world and Aquaman must rise up and challenge him to become the king of the seven seas and save the world. Jason Momoa plays Arthur Curry slash Aquaman who will become the ruler of the seven kingdoms. I mean, seven seas. Amber Heard plays the hot red-headed love interest Mira. Willem Dafoe is not Dafoe in this movie. He is a mentor called Volko. Patrick Wilson plays King Orm who is Aquaman's half-brother. Dolph Lundgren plays a competent actor. He really plays Nereus which is Mira's father. Nicole Kidman plays Aquaman's mother Atlanta and finally yeah I'm not even going to attempt that yeah he plays Black Manta one thing that I was not expecting to enjoy in this movie was the romance between Aquaman's mother and father I really enjoyed their scenes together and it really sold that they actually had a romance and had a thing for each other and that their love was a real thing on the other hand Aquaman's and Mira's relationship i didn't really think they had that much chemistry towards the start of the movie i knew they were love interests but there wasn't really that much good banter between them i felt but then after the halfway point things got a lot better and i could see that these two actually cared for each other king orm is kind of the main villain and his reasoning for declaring war on the surface world and humanity is because they're polluting the oceans or something but instead of just sending all the ocean all the rubbish in the ocean just straight back on land which he does in the movie he goes a step further and declares war on people and kills innocent people which is just yeah. if he really wanted to declare war on humanity just because all the all the rubbish and pollution in the water even though he was capable of just sending it back why didn't he just do that the acting in this movie overall is pretty solid amber heard when she was when in the first kind of half of the movie i thought there was some bits of dialogue that she could have delivered better and but she did get better as the movie went on and was more believable so there's that the scenes with her that i really enjoyed is when she was on the surface with aquaman and exploring the human world in sicily and all that that was all really good it's a kind of fish out of water scenario which is a fish out of water who wrote this Patrick Wilson also did a pretty good job as well. He does go a bit over the top in some scenes, but he is the kind of villain, so you kind of expect that. But Patrick Wilson goes a bit over the top in comic book movies in general. <coughs> but it isn't terrible and doesn't detract from the movie too much. Now, the most awesome villain in this movie is Black Manta. He tries to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aquaman at the start of the movie as a regular human, gets his ass kicked, and his dad gets trapped and his dad dies and he desires revenge against Aquaman because Aquaman left his dad to die when he could have saved him he was being a bit of a prick so that's what you get for being a prick Aquaman on a negative note some of the dialogue was a bit awkward and wasn't delivered very well one scene that comes to mind is when um, Volko is training a younger Aquaman when he's a teenager and Arthur asks about his mother and Volko ans answers him and he says Arthur says, does she not love me? Like, does she not love me? Wouldn't a teenager just say, doesn't she love me? Is There's a couple of bits of dialogue like that that are just a bit, just a bit cheesy and not delivered very well and come over as a bit awkward. James Wan directs this movie. I looked at his filmography before, seeing what kind of movies he's been involved in in the past. He's been mostly involved in the Saw franchise, the Conjuring and the Insidious movies. So those kind of horror movies, he's either been director, writer, producer, or one or two of the three. So those are the kind of movies he's mostly been involved in. And I couldn't see that he's been involved in any kind of superhero movie before. So his first time directing a big budget superhero movie, he has done an amazing job. The action and choreography in this movie is absolutely amazing to say the least. It is there is a lot of action, so there's plenty of it to keep you interested and keep you going, even when there's a bit of a lull in the pacing. You can tell that a lot of effort went into the action and choreography. When they're shooting fighting scenes, they take a step back, you get a clear shot 
of the action and they do longer takes for the action and show off more of the choreography as opposed to just quick cuts that just breaks it up and makes it all look all messy in my opinion. Sound is going to kind of tie into the action because when action is going, punches are being thrown, people are being thrown around and tridents are clashing together. It all sounds amazing. It all sounds heavy. It all sounds like it has weight. The sound when the tridents clash on each other sounds really good. It's amazing. <laughs> All of those sounds sound really good. Also, the music in this is really good as well. The music is composed by Rupert Gregson Williams, and I thought that all of his themes in this movie were quite good, two of which stick out to me the most. Um, King Orm's theme is quite good. I enjoyed that. That was quite memorable to me. I'll leave a link in the description so if you want to hear it for yourself. But the theme that stuck out to me the most in this movie was Black Manta's theme. It sounds utterly amazing. I, as soon as I came home from watching this movie, I listened to it over and over and over again. It's just got such a good beat to it, and it's so dark and menacing. It was just, music-wise, was the highest point of this movie for me. I'll also leave a link in the description where you can find it on YouTube and give it a listen. I highly recommend that you do. So with this being a high-budget superhero movie, of course it's going to be very special effect heavy. I'm not going to comment too much on the CGI. The CGI is all right. Particularly the city of Atlantis, I felt, looked and the underwater scenes all looked really good. That all looked really, 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 really good because there's so much to look at and there's such bright colours and it's just so beautiful to look at, which is in stark contrast to previous DC movies where it's all dark and gritty and devoid of colour. Also with the special effects, they're getting really good at de-aging characters with CGI. Willem Dafoe looks really good de-aged and so does Tamara Morrison. I could I could barely tell they were using CGI to de-age them. Were they using CGI to de-age them? Does anyone know? Comment below, let me know. But it, that looked really good and really convincing as well. They actually did look really young. That was really good. This movie was odd to me because it felt longer than it actually was, but I wasn't bored at all, which was strange. And thinking about it, as I said before, there is lots of action in this movie. Um, I think barely even 10, 15, 20 minutes goes by with an without an action scene. So even when there's a bit of a lull and things slow down a bit, there's still another action scene just right around the corner to keep you going. And it's they're really good action scenes too, so it keeps you entertained and keeps you engrossed in the movie and it just makes it more fun. But yeah, the movie does feel like it does drag down in a few places. So as long as you like action, which you're a bit of a weirdo if you're not, in my opinion, <laughs> that you'll be engrossed in this movie and we'll have a good time. The things I enjoyed in this movie is it had great characters, it, the villains were great. Orm, Orm was okay, but Black Manta was amazing. The action and choreography was amazing. So fun to watch. The music was awesome. It had a decent and interesting simple story. And I forgot to mention before, it doesn't go overboard with CGI. It's not trying to be a Marvel movie. There are very few things I didn't like about this movie. Just like, as I said before, some cheesy lines and not the best um, line delivery. I didn't really buy Mira and Aquaman's romance at the start but at the end it grew grew on me and as i said before the pace can get bogged down a bit but as long as you enjoy action there is a lot to enjoy and lots of fun so i'm gonna say even if you're not a person who's really interested in superhero movies or dc movies if you think DC's had a bad track record in the past this one will change your mind i think it there is a lot of fun to be had the only kind of person I can think of that wouldn't like this movie is someone who's not really into action-oriented movies and is looking for something a bit more. They might get bored by this movie. So, those are my thoughts on Aquaman. Hope you, hope you enjoyed the review. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. You can find me on social media. There's links to my videos down below. As always, thank you for watching.